Thanks for joining. I'm Todd Stewart. I'm the Vice President of Public Art with the Arts and Science Council. And I'm joined tonight by Randella Foster, ASC's Public Art Project Manager. Um, we're also joined by Darnika Waters and Gwen Cook with Mecklenburg County Park and Rec. So thanks to you both for joining. And tonight we're gonna to be discussing the Mecklenburg County Urban Creek Greenway uh, Public Art Opportunity. Um, this is a chance for us to share a little bit about ASC and our process for commissioning artists and then getting artwork built through the public art program. We'll do a, a review or overview of the Urban Creek Greenway project and specifically the public art opportunity. And then at the end, I'll be giving some uh, tips or pointers or some suggestions that you may want to take into consideration as you're developing your application for this project, if you choose to do so. Uh, and then another brief, just kind of housekeeping thing. We are recording tonight's meeting. You should have probably gotten a notice of that when you joined. This is just in case um, anyone wants to see it, you know, for posterity, so everyone's questions can be uh, kind of recorded here and we can share it with the world. Okay, Randella, can you advance to the next slide, please? So uh, I hope we're, most of us are familiar with Zoom at this point, but just overall housekeeping rules, please mute your audio um, while we're presenting just so everyone can hear clearly. You can do that with the microphone icon. If it's got a line through it, you're muted. If you do want to say something or ask a question later on, feel free to unmute yourselves at that time. Next slide. Yep, that's it. Uh, you can also raise your hand, ask a question using the reactions icon. So it looks like a little smiley face, arrow pointed there, what it looks like on our desktop. Next slide, please. And then just press the raise hand button. Uh, while we're presenting, um, if you would like to put any questions or comments in the chat, Randella and I will be monitoring that throughout the uh, meeting tonight, and we'll be happy to share those with the group or answer it in the chat room. And you can find that by the little speech bubble icon. Next slide. And that's where you put it in. All your questions and comments. All right, next slide, please, Randella. So a little bit about the ASC Public Art Program. Uh, all of this is made possible for a 1% for art ordinance that was adopted in 2002 and 2003. Two separate ordinances, one for Mecklenburg County and one for the city of Charlotte. And what that percent for art ordinance means is that 1% of eligible capital improvement project funds are designated to public art for that specific project or within the geographic area. ASC, when we work in the county, in the city, we try to keep it as closely tied to the project that the funds are coming from as possible. Possible. So we manage the public art program for Mecklenburg County, City of Charlotte, and through the City of Charlotte, Charlotte and Douglas International Airport. We've been involved in public art uh, management since 1992. At that point, um, it was a lot of philanthropic groups uh, raising funds together and then donating works of art to either the city or the county or the airport. And ASC worked as kind of a broker in terms of working out all the logistics of that, both administratively and citing the works and, you know, how that whole process would work. So in the 20 years that we've managed this program through the ordinance, ASC is responsible for the planning of the artworks, the artist selection uh, process in partnership with the Public Art Commission. We contract with the artist, uh, help facilitate community engagement and then coordinate the facilitation of fabrication and installation. Um, all of this is done with Public Art Commission oversight. I'll talk a little bit more about them later. To date, we've accomplished 180 projects. Um, those are represented in this out-of-date map that you'll see to the right. The blue dots are county projects, the red dots are city, and from time to time, we do get a private commission from architects or developers or uh, specific groups, and those are represented by the green dots. And currently we have about 40 plus projects in some form of design fabrication are about to be installed. Next slide, please. So, 
So all this was made possible through a public art master plan that was developed uh, 2001, right before we got the ordinance, it actually helped us to get the ordinance. And within that, we, we uh, kind of deemed our objectives as public art serves as a catalyst for connectivity, bonding people to a place and one another, generating a greater sense of pride and responsibility for places that enhance quality of life and celebrate communities' unique attributes. Next slide. And a little bit about the public art artist selection process. So ASC typically releases one of two types of opportunities, either a request for qualifications or an RFQ and a request for proposals. Um, so through the RFQ process, we're really just asking for your qualifications. This is being selected on the merit of your past work, uh, your vision as an artist, your sensibility, uh, your resume and your artist statement or uh, statement of intent. With proposals, from time to time, we do gather enough information uh, during the planning phase of a project, or maybe we're under a stricter deadline, or there's some very specific uh, attributes to the project that call for a proposal. Usually we provide an honorarium for selected artists to develop proposals, and then the artists are selected based on that. Regardless of the type of call artist we release, uh, the Public Art Commission plays a central role in that. That's a nine member uh, appointed body, uh, three appointees by the city of Charlotte, three appointees by Mecklenburg County, and three appointees by the Arts and Science Council. And their responsibilities are really the formal commissioning of artists for specific opportunities. And then the oversight of each design phase uh, for those specific projects and the eventual acceptance of the artworks into the city, the county, or the airport's collection via the city. So all that's to say is ASC is responsible for the management of the project, of getting the projects built, getting the artworks built, but we actually don't own any of these artworks. It's all the property of the county and the city. Our artist selection panels are chaired by a PAC member and comprised of three to five individuals, uh, majority art and design professionals with community and stakeholder representatives involved as well. Um, we do have a PAC chair that oversees the process on each artist selection panel. They're the ones that help facilitate the meeting and then report back to the Public Art Commission. And generally this happens in two different meetings. One will be to review the applicants that apply to the opportunity to select three finalists, possibly more, and then at the next uh, meeting, we call those panelists in either in person or we've been doing it via Zoom for a while now. And it's very much like an interview process. The artists are allowed to present their work, present a little bit about themselves and their creative practice to the voting panelists, and then have a chance to answer some questions from the panelists as well. Uh, your applications and you know how you make it through to the being one of those finalists is you're evaluated on the following criteria, originality and creativity of past work, exemplary technical competence and comparable scale of past work, professional qualifications and experience, and consistent quality in production of artwork. Next slide, please, Randella. And then as I said earlier, you know, ASC really sees public art as a way of tying people to the place in which they will live and, you know, further putting some humanity into the built environment of the city. Um, and we take that as a great source of pride and we really achieve that through dialogue and working with community members. And the requirement of each of our contracts is some form of community engagement, often multiple types of community engagement. So, even from the beginning of the process, as I said earlier, community rep representatives serve on our selection panels so their voice is in the room when artists are being selected. From there, the commission artists dialogue with community members, both for inspiration and as a means of fielding their concepts and kind of getting some feedback on how their design is progressing. They may have specific questions to communities. They may wanna involve communities in very specific ways. Uh, some artists even go as far as to lead artist-led or 
or facilitated workshops where participants are involved in some form of making or designing elements or attributes of the projects um, or the artworks. Some artists conduct surveys in terms of helping them to uh, deem, you know, what would be priorities in terms of representation or certain symbols or certain imagery or forms to use in the artwork. And then from time to time, we ask artists to do presentations on their works to either student groups or to the community at large and invite them to participate in dedications when appropriate or when we're allowed to. And the images you'll see on the right are just various community engagement meetings we've had throughout the years. Uh, the top left, oh, back, it's fine. Top left, it was for with Blessing Hancock for the Joint Communication Center. That was a really interesting one where we combined uh, community members with members of the police and fire staff. And then to the right of that is Michael Morgan leading a clay uh, brick making workshop with uh, community members in West Charlotte. And then Laurel Holtzapple and Sean Cassidy uh, conducted a uh, kind of like a learning opportunity and design small design charrette along the Cross Charlotte Trail um, for their section of that project. Okay, next slide, please. And for further information, you can always contact myself. Again, I'm Todd, the Vice President, or Randella, Project Manager. Our email and phone numbers are listed there. You can find out more about ASC at our website. You can also, uh, through that website, find more about the completed projects and some projects that are in progress at ASC Public Art. And we mainly list our calls to artists through our website, and that link is there as well. If you'd like to know more about uh, ways ASC is impacting the places or neighborhoods in which you live or get constant updates on certain grants or public art projects, you can follow us on Facebook or Instagram at ASC Charlotte. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Rendella to uh, provide an overview on the project that we're here to talk about tonight, the Irwin Creek Thanks, Todd. So I'm just gonna jump right into the project overview. It is a brief project overview. I know the RFQ was many pages. However, if there's something that I don't cover um, that you have questions about, um, we will take questions at the end. So the site, of course, is the Erwin Creek Greenway at Nevin Community Park that's located on Statesville Road. The budget for the project, $102,000. That budget is to include all the artist fees, the design, any engineering, fabrication, installation. If there's lighting, it would include the lighting, as well as travel for the artist, insurance for the artist. Everything related to the artwork would need to be included in the budget. The project background, just a little bit about how we got here. Mecklenburg County Park and Recreation is adding to its greenway system. Um, they are adding a two mile linear green space called the Irwin Creek Greenway. Um, this is in the North Park region. It will provide non-vehicular access and connectivity to about 400 acres of recreation and neighborhood amenities. Irwin Creek Greenway is uniquely backdropped by the nature integrity of Ribbon Walk Nature Preserve and also bookended by Nevin Park at Statesville Road as well as Allen Hills Park at Cheviot Road. This Greenway project will provide opportunities for um, prescribed play for diverse user groups um, with different levels of mobility. Residents near and far frequent Nevin Community Park to partake in passive and active recreation like disc golf, sports, play and spray grounds, hiking, walking, and picnicking. And so, the opportunity, um, and this is image is pulled directly from the RFQ, which kind of hones in on where the space will be for the particular artwork. The selected artists will have the opportunity to create freestanding artwork to be cited in the designated space, which is actually the vehicular road and the Greenway Trail. Um, this location will be highly visible to vehicular traffic as well as visitors on the Greenway. 
the artwork will also serve as a wayfinding element, sort of demarking this transition between the spaces of vehicles and pedestrians. We are getting the artists on board early so that they can um, actually help um, in what that space, integrating the artwork into that particular space for a seamless uh, presentation. The artwork goals and criteria. This opportunity should achieve a cohesive and unique aesthetic experience. We want it to be, be distinguished from, but still sensitive to the Erwin Creek Greenway and the surrounding areas. The artwork should take inspiration from and potentially reference the Greenway experiences um, related to history, ecology, flora, fauna, as well as health and wellness activities. Again, we want the artwork to be highly visible um, and it has to be cited within that designated space. We want it to in be integrated into the overall design of the Greenway, but we also want it to be somewhat of a distinguishing landmark as well. The artwork should be constructed of durable materials. Um, we're looking for materials, um, aluminum, steel, corten, steel, stone, materials that are little, require little, little to no maintenance, basically, and also permanent in nature, meaning that it will last a minimum of 20 years. The schedule right now, we're looking at a potential fall winter 2024 um, for a completion of the construction. That is the expected time frame. Um, just keep in mind that, you know, these dates change depending upon where we are in design process and so forth. But just right now, that is what the anticipated time frame is for the project. And then just this is just uh, an area map I pulled from Google Earth. Um, it just shows you, you know, we mentioned how this area is backdrop by Ribbon Walk Nature um, Preserve, as well as Allen Hills Park and Niven Community Park. And then the arrow is just pointing to the green space area um, that will be impacted. All right, that's it for those, for the project overview. Thanks, Randella. Um, so now, like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to just kind of go over the uh, application materials, what we're looking to see in your application, and give some insight into uh, what we're looking at or for through your application. So next slide, please. So the big thing I'll stress is start early and don't wait to the deadline to apply. Um, this really, in terms of just not stressing you out, from time to time, like if some issue comes up either with your application or through Slide Room, which is the platform we use, the software we use to review applications and for you to submit applications, it's best not to wait till the last day of that thing in case any kind of technical difficulties come up. Either Slide Room staff or myself or Randella can help talk you through this. And it's not like a, you know, you know, super stressful bomb about to go off, cut the blue wire kind of situation. It's more like we got time to figure it out and we can go to the next step or whatever it needs to be. Um, so we begin with like a letter of interest or a video. And that's for a letter of interest, it's one page max or a two minute video. So this is super brief. And what we're looking for here is who are you and uh, why you're specifically interested in this opportunity, the Irwin Creek Greenway. So express your interest in the project. What's essential interest, what are your essential interests as an artist? Like what pushes you and motivates you to create art? And then why this specific opportunity? Uh, mention any relevant experience you have with public art, community projects, draw connections to the project itself that you're applying for. Discuss your process for conceptual development and designing and fabricating your work in general. Uh, is your work typically site specific? It's always good to provide examples, be as concrete as possible. Are you comfortable involving communities in your artistic process and provide examples if you have those? If you haven't had a chance to work with communities for your process creatively, maybe talk about some ways that you're excited to explore and which you would consider doing that. 
and then indicate ways a viewer may experience your work up close and from a distance, and then close with why you think you would be the best artist for the commission. Uh, we're going to move to some examples, and Stacy Utley, uh, one of our Charlotte-based artists, was kind enough to lend us some of his uh, application materials as a resource. So this is uh, Stacy's letter of interest for the Five Points Plaza project, which he was awarded through a collaboration with Edwin Harris, uh, who's a Durham-based architect and artist. So. You can see, I'm not going to read all this to you, but he breaks it out really well, very deliberately, and, you know, making his argument for why this project is something he is not only excited about, but well suited for. And then you can see he even has a bulleted list of similar projects or opportunities that he's achieved. Next slide. Then your CV or a resume or biography. So we've split this and we've, we've gone to working this way to where you can either provide a resume or CV or a biography with the understanding that not everyone may have this uh, well cultivated and you know so many projects under their belt that they can have like this well fleshed out resume. We would still want to hear from you about who you are your credentials as an artist and what would make you the best fit for this project. So make sure your resume includes all art related work experience, starting with your most recent. And if you choose to go the biography route, uh, make sure you have all work related experience that you want to highlight and that you can kind of tell the story around. Next page, please. All right, and then I would say probably the most important portion of any application is your portfolio images or the images in which you share. I'll be honest, I forget off the top of my head the number of images we allow you to share. I think I, I want to say it's like eight to 10, is that correct, Randella? Yes. Yeah, so I mean, that's that's, to me, personally, that's not a lot to really, especially working sculpturally, and this is an opportunity for sculpture. You know, sculpture exists in the round, in the built environment, and kind of getting those perfect shots of it that kind of, you know, a sculpture can change as you move around it. So I, I think for people working three-dimensionally, sometimes this can be especially challenging, but I will say I've seen more success in people showing like the one, uh, like prime example of like how best to display your artwork rather than trying to collage a bunch of different images into one uh, image submittal. We've set this up here to show kind of like a what not to do, what to do. So on the left, this is a artist team who presented this, uh, they applied for an opportunity. They've applied for multiple opportunities through us. And the artist is known for creating these integrated uh, ceramic tiles, either on vertical surfaces or in flat hardscaping like sidewalks and such. So the central image is a vertical surface in which he's done this beautiful mural made out of ceramic tile. And he's decided to border it with examples of the different types of tiles that go throughout the sidewalk in this particular project as well. What happens here is it gets a bit confusing to panelists as to what they're looking at. Um, also, just visually, it's pretty cluttered. Um, not, and th this is not to say that the project itself isn't exemplary or even stunning, but it's just how it's displayed that's important here. People are reviewing hundreds of applicants, you know, in terms of general numbers of what we're looking at here for our various projects. And you know, they're going to want to see, they're going to, I'm not going to say they're going to fly through it, but they're going to be moving pretty quickly. And you're going to want images that will catch their eye, but also be very succinct and clear in terms of explaining what your artwork is, what you're describing uh, through your imagery. So on the right, we have another artist, you know, who's created this architecturally integrated uh, sculpture, kind of seating area, um, some dramatic lighting, 
included people for scale so that you don't have to actually look at the dimensions and kind of guess and also you know it being up against the architecture helps as well next slide please Randella. so yeah so my advice to you would be try to be as clean and clear in your the images and the projects you're portraying as possible and not to do that kind of photo montage or collage approach Accompanying your images, we're looking for an annotation. This is basically like the uh, descriptors or the information behind each image. So please, in your examples, like tell us like the title, the year, the media that you've used, the materials that you've used to create it, the size, either approximately or you know as in depth as you want to get. Location of it, uh, commissioning agency, if there was one, that can either be like another arts council, a private developer, or even a private commission in terms of an individual. The budget for that project and then a brief description and try to keep those descriptions as succinct as you can. Next slide. And then references. So this is for the finalists. So if you're one of the finalists selected for this opportunity, we do ask that you provide three uh, references that we could call and check. I would say um, here, you know, this is an example of what we're looking for. If you can just give us their name, organization, or your relationship to them, email address and phone number to reach them by, um, and then any kind of position or title that they hold within that particular organization, that would be helpful. As a good rule of thumb, please reach out to them first. Let them know how excited you are to apply for this opportunity, that you've been selected as a finalist, and that you uh, hope to use them as a reference. Um, it always helps us when we're talking to people who expect it. Next slide. Todd, I will say we, we, we are actually requesting the references in the RFQ. That way we already have them and we can like, hit the ground running. So it's already in there for them to submit it with their application. Okay. Next slide. So now's the chance for us to answer any questions you may have. Um, these can be questions about ASC in general, the public art program, this specific project and the parameters and you know, helping, we can help you to define a little better of what we're looking for or any questions you may have about the application process or even the review process, I'm more than willing to go back over that about how an artist is actually selected. So um, I'll turn it over to you now. Uh, if you have any questions, like I said at the beginning, feel free to use the reaction button to raise your hand, unmute yourself and call out. Uh, if you don't want to share openly, just put it in the chat and Randell and I will check it out. All right, I think I got some raised hands here. Let's see. Yes, uh, John Lendleton and Kate Bogle. So I think I unmuted myself there. So I had a question under it. You say that all engineering is included. Do you have required specific engineering? Like, are we going to need stamped engineered drawings for this project? Yes. So that will mainly be for your foundations or any structural support you need if you're building a three-dimensional object or a sculpture. And okay. it'll need to be through a licensed North Carolina engineer. Okay. And if you don't know any, ASC can help you with some engineers who have helped us out with other artists in terms of the process and people that we trust. But again, you're more than willing to choose your engineer if you're like, as long as they're North Carolina licensed, we're cool with it. Okay. So th does that mean also that we create all the foundation and whatever the sculpture sits on that we're also responsible for that site preparation or is the park or city doing some of that? I would go into it with the understanding that you're doing it. From time to time that changes, but uh, okay. in terms of budgeting for your artwork, I would be conservative and lean more towards into, it's gotta be turnkey and the okay. artists will have to do their foundation as well. Okay. And do you, under testing, are you suggesting that we're going to have to be doing soil testing or something, or what were you? Yeah, so that's one of those things. Like, you know, uh, 
when we get into the project, we'll understand a little better about what's going on. So if there's already soil tests being done in the general vicinity of like where the sculpture's going, your foundation's going, there's no re reason to redo those. But from time right. to time, artists will need to do bore testing and you know figure out what okay. the conditions are before uh, getting a structural engineer involved. Okay, and then permitting. Do you anticipate that there's permits we're gonna need there? Uh, the only permitting I could think of would be for your structural, um, again, and that would be something that a general contractor would actually apply for through Mecklenburg County when we get to that uh, mm -hmm. part of the project. Additionally, uh, lighting, if, if that's something that we begin to include in the scope, mm -hmm. figuring out how it needs to happen, I don't know. That's not really something we've discussed yet, but th that electrical. Right wiring diagram would need to be permitted as well. Even if you're using something low voltage, we've run into problems with that in the past of thinking like, well, you know, I'm going a solar route or whatever. Uh, Mecklenburg County and Duke Energy, all those, they're still gonna wanna see um, okay. permits for it. And then um, you also had said that we need to be there for in-person community meetings. Do you have some sense of like typically how many in-person meetings versus Zoom meetings your projects are taking? Yeah, so um, it's always one as a minimum, um, and but it's usually around two. And the reason we do that oh. is we'll do one up front where you're able to kind of introduce yourselves and ASC will help you with this, introduce yourselves to the communities in which you're designing for, you know, maybe get some uh, inspiration from them. Uh, and then as you then develop your concept, get it approved by the Public Art Commission, I think it's always a good rule of thumb to go back to the community and kind of share like what you heard, how you've developed the concept, get any feedback that might be helpful to you as an artist um, in terms of developing that towards schematic design. So it changes. Like the project I was referencing for um, that, Stacy Edley, who provided all those materials for Five Points Plaza, I think they ended up doing something like six or seven community engagement meetings. Mm -hmm. Now, what I will say is that's defined in the agreement that you'll be you know, signing as an artist, mm -hmm. like up front, like the number. Um, I don't think we've decided what that number will be for this project at this time, but it'll be at least one. And I don't think more than like three, you know, two or three at the most. Okay, and then insurance, are you requiring upfront insurance for during the process of creating the piece? And then Correct. is there insurance required that we have to carry after the install? Just during it. So the way it works is, you know, we're gonna look for general liability insurance um, and advertising insurance, and, you know, pretty standard stuff. Um, throughout the life of you creating the project and we'll look for ASC to be added as additionally insured. So okay. once it's installed, once the Public Art Commission has accepted the piece into the collection in Mecklenburg County, then they mm -hmm. own it and their insurance covers it. So you do not need to have insurance for the life of the project or life of the artwork. Okay, great. That, that was my questions, thank you. So those are very good questions, thank you. Hey, Randella, can we move to a slide that's not just, it doesn't just say questions, like maybe like one of the images of the site or something like that. And uh, I'm gonna apologize up front if I've mispronounced anyone's name. I, I always hate to do that, but uh, Chalice Barsh. Yeah, hi, um, it's Chalice, it's spelled like Chalice, it's all good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, maybe yeah, maybe this got covered and I, I think I might have just missed it. Um when you get insurance for the do you don't have to like get insurance before you're approved, correct? That's right. Like um, cool. just as soon as you get the uh agreement, we got, you know, we negotiate it, you sign it. ASC will just look to have us add it as additional insurance and we'll need a certificate of insurance delivered to us like in the early phases of the project. But, okay, awesome, thank you. Yeah, I think it's like 30 days in the contract. They yeah, have to get that thank you. Yeah, it is something like that. Um, Jonathan, you have your hand raised. Yes, uh, a couple of questions. Um, 
are there fabrication material limitations that we need to be aware of? I know that a couple were mentioned, but I just wanted to confirm that there wasn't anything that is out of the picture or there are things that are expected to be included as far as materials. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a tricky question to answer because it's going to have to be durable. And ASC in Mecklenburg County, like we define durable as it's going to be, you got to take into consideration it's going to be in public space, especially this space. Like, not only is it, um, you know, the weather, the elements over time impacting it, UV rays, but people as well, well, especially if you design something that's to be interacted with, like people climbing on it, people, whatever. I mean, um, so in terms of answering your question, Jonathan, I mean, there's certain things like glass or certain acrylic materials, thinner acrylic materials, things like that, um, that just wouldn't, I don't think would work for a site like this where it's going to be heavily trafficked by and then also just a huge amount of UV and weathering that it's going to take. So some of the materials that Manila mentioned, you know, like stone, concrete, core steel, stainless steel, painted steel, painted aluminum or powder coated aluminum, things of that nature are what we generally see in our project. But I by no means want to hinder someone's creativity if selected for the commission. I think it's more of an opportunity for you to have your idea be concept driven. Let us have a dialogue and a discussion with you about what materials you could see your project being made in. Would that work? Would the county who ultimately takes on ownership of the project and is liable for the maintenance, you know, and the, the safety of the piece, um, is it something they're comfortable with? So it is very much a discussion during that conceptual kind of phase of the project. We don't, I guess I'll end it by saying, we don't have a list of like, here are materials you cannot use and here are materials that are ASC approved. It's, it's a little more fluid than that. Nice, okay, that, that's good. Uh, if, if, my, if I may as well, um, are there any sort of uh, limitations as far as installation access? Uh, I, it seems like there's a lot of this based on the, the photos and stuff, but I just wanted to know if there was any sort of um, issues that might be apparent for getting access in for the installation process itself. So you mean like uh, actually getting uh, like size of heavy vehicles. equipment and stuff yeah. into the site to actually install it when the time comes? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's something we'd have to look at later. I mean, things are going to change as it becomes a construction site, but probably change in regards of more access rather than less. Um, but don't hold me to that yet. It's something that at that point, it's more of an opportunity for ASC to help the commission artists kind of coordinate not only with the project managers and the planners through Mecklenburg County, but also the contractor and the architects, particularly the contractor, to figure out like what's the best way to access the site and how to do so safely and not ruin the site depending on what other work's being done around it. But looking at it now, I wouldn't see any problem getting like forklifts, cranes, you know, other materials kind of access to the site. Yeah, and those are questions we ask you. I think it's the schematic design where you have to like tell us what equipment you plan on using for the actual installation. So we do ask that up front to try and coordinate that for you as Todd mentioned. Excellent, thank you. Thank you. Um, let me see. And Lane, Lane A. Hi yeah. there, yes. Um, I have a question about the credentials part. Underneath the credentials where it asks for a minimum of 30,000 budget project, right? Right. Should that, is it preferred that that is specifically sculpture? No. Uh, we just want to see that you've worked with budgets of that scale. Um, you know, I think if in terms of selecting the work, with this being a request for qualifications, if you have artworks completed that are similar in scale or scope or whatever to what uh, is being uh, asked for here, 
that can be a okay. help, but it's by no means a hindrance if you don't. I, I would just really focus on your letter of interest and your expertise as an artist and your vision um, in terms of what you submit. Okay, got it. Thank you so much. Yep, thank you. All right. Any other yes. questions? Oh, yeah. Todd, may I ask one other question? Yeah. Um, with regards to, um, is there any sort of expectation as the number of, of sculptures that would make up the piece itself? Um, like, it seems like from the space, there could be, it could be multiple littles or it could be one larger. Is there any, is there any kind of expectations going in with that? Uh, no, not by me. And I haven't heard any from Mecklenburg County yet. I think it's something that uh, we'll get to find a little bit more as we're actually like visiting the site in person, you know, talking with community members, talking with the architects and planners. Um, but we didn't draft it. We kept it pretty open in the RFQ. I think the really promising aspect of what we have here as an opportunity is a chance for the artist to dialogue and work with the architects. So it's not just a sense of like, put sculpture here, X marks the spot, but how do we define the space? What's going on in it? How are, what's the function of the space, which is a little, you know, unconventional um, and go from there. My only thing that I would preface or just the disclaimer I would share for that is be mindful of the budget and don't let your ambition exceed it. Like, um, you know, as an artist, like, and working through this, make sure you're paying yourself, make sure you have some contingency worked in, especially now with all the supply chain issues and things that we got going on. So if it gets to the point where you envision it being one sculpture, be mindful of the scale of that and what you can pull off of this budget. Randella and I are here to help with that. If you start seeing it become multiple opportunities or something more interactive in terms of a functional like seating or something like that way, don't go for broke and feel like you have to create 10 different sculptures. Like um, the budget and the schedule in a lot of ways and the parameters of the site really define um, how a project develops in a lot of ways. And I think too, Todd, just in initial conversations and in the RFQ, you know, it would be great if we had multiple pieces, but with that budget, we're definitely looking for something more large scale that could provide that wayfinding element. I'm not sure how much of the tree canopies will remain with the construction, but we have to think about that too, like what people can see, vehicular traffic as well as um, pedestrians, you know, keeping within the budget, but still making something that could be visible um, from a distance, just so that we are still providing that wayfinding element. That's a great point. Thank you. Shalise, did you have your hand up earlier? Do you have another question? Uh, I did. It got answered. Thank you. Oh, okay, cool. And uh, John Littleton and Kate Bogle, you have another question. So in talking about scale and that it's possible wayfinding, do you like have a sense? Are you thinking that, you know, it should be at least 10 feet tall or 20 feet tall or a certain width or are you not there at all? It's just, let's look how it looks at the site. Randall, I'll let you weigh on this too. I'm not there yet. I'd like to look at the site. I'd like to learn a little bit more about um, what the artists are interested in, what, you know, the directions or approaches that you would be interested in as an artist and if you receive this commission and then getting some feedback from our stakeholders and the community and kind of, you know, and talking with the architects as well. To Randella's point, I mean, we do look for the stuff to be visible, um, but, to what degree and you know this is interesting in that you'll have people possibly congregating here but I think the main approach to it will be either through vehicular traffic or pedestrian and bike traffic along the greenway as it transitions to that so you may have people that are seeing it on the move um, so how do you heighten that experience how do you make it something that stands out in the environment from there those are questions I would pitch to the artist, but in terms of scale and, you know, form, 
I would be looking to you all as the experts on that. Yeah, and we, you know, a part of the process is, you know, once you sign your contract, we arrange a site visit um, for the artists with the design team to meet on site because um, pictures don't really, you know, provide the all the information that you need. Um, so that can help you, you know, as you're coming up with what your concept will be. And it's, it, you know, just keeping in mind that it'll be a process. So, you know, you'll have your concept. Th these are my initial thoughts based on what I have learned so far. And then we understand that that may change, you know, over time based on pricing and materials. But, you know, we don't just like throw you out there and leave you. So, you know, we're here to, to help you get through those processes um, and definitely working with county to figure out, you know, is that too high? Are there any, you know, is, you know, is a scale large enough? What, you know, what their thoughts are as well. So there'll be definitely be time for feedback from, from us, from the stakeholders, from the Public Art Commission. So you'll get a lot of feedback to help you with the process. Any other questions? Nope. Well, these have been excellent questions that you've all asked. So thanks for that. And thank you for joining. As I said, uh, I'm always available. Um, you know, reach me by phone or email. Um, happy to answer any questions that I can. And if I can't get you the answers to the question myself, I'll do my best to put you in touch with someone who can. Uh, please remember to apply before the deadline, and that is June 14th at 11.59 p.m. And thanks again for joining us. I look forward to seeing everyone's applications. And thank you, Randella. And I will say, yeah, and I will say, if it's technical and slide room related, please refer to slide room for that technical assistance.